charming. I'm good looking and in shape, but bored. I need something to do next. Another challenge to conquer. Please give it to me. T2458 Learning Corp Little Red Riding Hood Take One. Fellas, it's so good to see you. So good to see you. I'm a little bit of, I don't know, just feel the vibes right now. The end of seasonal affective disorder is upon us. The Canadian winter is over. It's actually a mild winter, so I shouldn't complain, but. It's not so much the cold, it's dark. Anywho, welcome, Red Morning. Another great morning. We're on episode I don't even know anymore. I know my thumbnails are up to like 166, but I know there's at least 100 thumbnails previous to that. That's like post-Carl, 160 some episodes. We'll say 300. That sounds like a nice round number. Let's celebrate the 300th uh, anniversary of talking about our dicks online. <laughs> What are we going to celebrate with? Oh, I don't know. We'll probably make fun of Stedman a little bit later because he's in jail. He can't defend himself. Well, that's not very nice. No, it's not. Um, yeah, thank you for... I love the thumbnail. I love the thumbnail. Yeah, I'm having fun with them. Like, the thumbnails have gone through some iterations over the years, and right now we're on an augmented AI kick, so we'll see how that one goes. Anyway, pulling up my notes, and we'll get to subject for today. Let me make sure I got my timestamps right. Do these work? Like, do you guys actually like these? I shall probably use them now because, I don't know. At some point, I have to, to bite the bullet and start doing the, the fancy YouTuber Pearl and Fresh thing where I just make 500 clips of, like, actual content. Because nobody actually wants to watch anything. They just want to be told in a quick 30-second soundbite what to think. It's like TikToks, only... Faker and gear. <laughs> so I saw a bunch of you wondering what the heck I was talking about with the topic, and it's springboarded as usual off of the Substack, which springed off of some stuff that happened in my life and some stuff from a bunch of the other the T Rex guys. It's my favorite part of understanding sexual dynamics. It's not that you know, oh, you have millions of dollars and blah blah blah. Well, you know, you will make more money, and yes, you will have more sex, and yes, you will generally do better than prior to the way you were thinking about things. I mean, if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't be here. But what I'm getting at is how funny it is when you start to see, and I hate the reference, but we're going to go with it, like the code for the Matrix, you know? It's, oh, it was crazy. Once she turned 28, she started talking about she's not like that anymore. She stopped partying, she starts nesting. <laughs> and every time I see it, I'm just like, yep, there it is. And that's the part that gets me, is that People aren't, like, we're not that special, you and me. We're, as Nick would say, we're all pieces of shit and our grandmother's undressed for sailors. Yeah, what to think with Sigma male music playing in the background, of course. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Notes preparation? Do you know how to YouTube, sir? I know! I know what an idiot I am. But the... The fact that everything's kind of been there, done that. And it's hard, it's hard to do this many episodes because I think it was uh, one of the guys from the Patreon was talking about that. I've seen about the third iteration of like the similar content because Red Pill ain't that deep. It is deep, but it's not that wide. If you want to talk about all of the concepts within the Red Pill, I can narrow it down to maybe a dozen concepts, maybe two dozen. And there, because that's there's really only two things that it's about: male sexual strategy. How do you get laid? How do you have a relationship? How do you start and maintain, you know, a familial relationship in the current landscape and positive male identity? How do you stop yourself from falling for that need to be a sacrificial lamb for some ungrateful Karen and a court system that would much rather send you to Iraq to get electrocuted in the shower than to actually have fun with your family? Look at that. Granddad was in the Merchant Navy. That's such like a World War II thing. We haven't had a, as far as I know, we haven't had a Merchant Navy in forever. Which, if I remember correctly, and it's been a long time since I even thought about this stuff, the Merchant Navy was like privateers, but for, for killing krauts. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what's going on, guys? I see y'all in the chat here. We're going. 
And normally I would just do some, oh yeah, chicks whamming, am I right? And we'd laugh there, because look, they're all the same. They turn 28, they want the babies. They stop doing drugs or being fun or being sexual, and we're just supposed to put up with it. Hey, let's pay for the privilege of letting them live their life dream out, you know? And I'm just like, I'm tired. I'm tired, man. Like, you can only shit on whamming so much before you're just like, I get it. She smells nice. She's the perfect woman until she isn't. And then it was your fault for not doing something enough. I've been there. I've done that. We've done this so much. I'll put on a Hawaiian shirt and some yellow sunglasses and we'll start doing the, the chick talks again, I promise. But it didn't then. But now, the cycle I'm talking about is the anger. Anger cycle. So there's a few things I'm going to go here. First is just some musings about the anger phase and the things that I've noticed over my years in this space being ridiculously invested. Uh, one sec. Thoughts with a note. Next part we'll get into is uh, a lot of the why, the five stages stuff. And then the how to get out of it. Now, I might, if we have time, talk about the residual anger phase because most people aren't even aware of that one. I mean, they are, but you have to kind of go through it first. And you cannot tell a guy. I cannot tell you if you're in the residual anger phase because that's when you're in your six months of being an insufferable asshole phase where nobody can tell you shit and you're the true, you're true God amongst men, you know? Is the audio low? I don't think it is. I think that's you because on my I, our EQs here, I'm almost clipping out. I've like really worked hard to fine tune this thing so it clips out at about negative five decibels which it doesn't get much louder or it doesn't get much quieter than that yeah tell you what it's because it's just because it's you and me we'll up it we'll up it just a touch Does Ryan recommend tempo? Ryan does recommend tempo, but not from a red pill thing. It's, I just find it to be a good book, especially about organization. And I have, I have stolen the concept of, of OODA loops from the book. It has a bunch of parallels. So if you guys don't know, tempo is a book from Venkatesh Rao, where he talks about decision-based or narrative-based decision-making. There's a bunch of things in there, like talk about the intensity and the positivity, negative, and message, little charts you can draw out it's kind of like mental maps i don't know if you've ever done that that kind of work or uh what are those ones called the word word trees anyways it's got some neat stuff in there when it goes along these things but it, it's very abstract the reason i would not recommend it as a red pill thing is because it's it really does lack action ability it's more of a tool to amplify action you're already taking and god knows god god fucking knows if there is one thing that the, the red pill dudes or the manosphere or the mana swamp or this hodgepodge of dicks and balls needs, it's more navel gazing. Absolutely. Oh, it'd be great if we could sit and think and talk about shit and do fuck all. That's, that's what a real man would do. Fuck all. Sweet fuck all. No, I'm not doing that to you guys. Guys, Liver King can do no handed, no feet touching ground push ups. Oh, hush. Hush. Um, yes, stripper, I have a limiter and I clip it at three decibels, but at the same time, if my EQ goes too high, it'll just be like the sound will still be clipped, but it'll just be at a reasonable level. So if you're into the audio of this stuff, I run a very standard, um, radio setup and radio is, so you run your EQ, your chain as loud as you can get it and without clipping. You know, generally speaking, how's your voice go? How loud do you get? And then you run a compressor at 20 decibels, two to one, which means the highest you're going to get there is 10 to one. And then you raise and then you raise the output signal 10 decibels. Kills the highs, kills the lows, puts them all in the same and then run a three to, uh, three to five decibel uh, limiter on top of that. And that's generally the way to do it. Add another three to six decibels of bass and then. For some reason, this mic's got a weird thing at the mid range at around like 1200 hertz where I have to where I have to like completely drown out that specific frequency. So it means I have to fiddle a bit with the mids and the highs. This is so technical. Who really gives a shit? Gives a shit. Gives a shit. 
Let's make fun of Stedman and start on the topic. Oh, no, wait, is this the, oh, I still didn't find that. I, I promised you guys I was going to send you another erudite uh, mockery thing that I did. It was like a Brady Bunch theme, but for the life of me, I couldn't find the fucking thing. Like, I don't know where the fuck I left it. Yeah, who knows? All right, whatever. We'll uh, make fun of her the old fashioned way. Where is that goofy bitch? There she is. So I used to be a pretty strong feminist. I've actually become a feminist again. Ooh. Feminists, though, can be some of the worst people you'll ever meet. They can be like some of the most nasty. They'll take advantage of uh, contradictory uh, world values, right? Worldview, which is that like I'm talking about like psychology and mental health for men, and yet yeah. I'm in a field that like is overly feminized and shoving drugs down men's throat. And I'm like, and I'm yeah. still recommending it because I don't want to lose like the baby out with the bathwater. Just because not all therapists are well trained to work with men. Just because a lot of therapists might even be biased against particularly like incel type men. If they hear misogynistic language at all, they might like shut yeah. you down. So and it was just difficult because I didn't want to be like super like nasty and mean or anything. Um... It's fucking hell. I feel the you know what I feel the worst for? For that fucking husband, man. Get to watch his girl. That's like being married to like uh uh like Shannon Tweed. I guess not Shannon Tweed, that's a bad example because like he runs Kiss, who cares? But like some softcore B movie celebrity star. And like, hey, what are you up to today? Oh, I gotta go pretend to fuck hot dudes. What about you? Well, I was gonna putter around the house, maybe do some mini golfing later. <laughs> All right. No. Ooh, actually, you know what? Stop everything. This one's important. This one's important. Uh, background before I get started. Sartain and Rolo for Access Vegas actually managed to get a interview with Mystery. And like I sat there and I'm like, oh, and he even sent things like, you can come on in if you want to. And I did. I was like, I'd love to come in, ask questions, chill out. And, but then part of me is like, you know what? Maybe pause on this one. Because you know the thing, never meet your heroes, right? And I'm like, I don't know if I want to know him. I like it better where I know his material. I know what he looks like. I've seen some interviews that I got lucky meeting Rolo. I got lucky meeting Rolo. I don't want to start meeting everybody. So anyways, to answer that, that's Null Super Chat. Four heartfelt 20 pound Super Chat. Thank you very much, sir. Heartfelt F U. Times four. One advice for an old man. I have seen a mystery interview. He is not far from Peterson living in his head. Yeah. Could be worse. Honestly, and I, I shit on Peterson a lot, mostly because a lot of his stuff is trash and his parent his family is wearing his his brand as a skin suit, and it was kind of an accident anyway, but I generally like the guy. I just wish everybody around him wasn't a sycophant and like leeching off of him. I think that's the worst part. I would hate for him to like become accidentally famous because then everybody wants a piece of you. Everybody wants a piece of you and they tell you what you want to hear and you enter this little weird bubble of sycophants and like you can't help but become a demagogue. You can't help but let all of that fluffing get straight to your head, man. Started talking about things like he's the Messiah, took that I honestly, I just, part of me wishes and hopes he's a cynical, checked out guy. He's like, you know what? I'm going to get my money and get the fuck out of here. I don't give a shit if your room is clean or not. I hope so. And I hope Mystery's there too. Oh yeah, I guess Glover would be, an art, uh, Robert Glover would be another good example. Thank you very much. Anyways, yeah, so uh, thank you for that one. I, I still have it. I haven't started it yet. I'm sitting there. I'm staring at the thing in my, in my, in the thing. So thoughts on anger. I, I enjoy the red pill stuff. I do. I do. I do. It's like it, it helps me. I've seen it help others. And it's, it's remarkably predictable. So like the longer I'm here, the more confidence I have in espousing any of the mental models that have stuck around for this length of time. Like at this point, AWALT, when I hear arguments about it, I just kind of like check out. And you see it all the time on Twitter. Like, uh, there's that one chick. I don't know who she is now. There's always, for some reason, every month, there's like a brand new girl. And it reminds me of that vibe when you were in college or early in the military. And there was that girl that slept with everybody in your social circle. It's kind of like that on Twitter. Except for it looks like beef. You know the problem with all these red pill dudes? And they're like, like they did what my last ex-boyfriend did. And they're shitting on everybody. Meanwhile, we all kind of talk behind the scenes and like, oh, yeah, was she in your DMs? Yeah, she's sitting on me in there. Yeah, she's sitting on me in there. Yeah, I got her number. We talk later. 
And she's out there talking shit like you wouldn't believe. Meanwhile, everybody behind the scenes is like, eh, mid, okay. And it makes me realize, like, I honestly, I honestly think it, that this whole anti-red pill dudes crusade isn't really a crusade. I think it's a bunch of girls who don't know how to flirt that are really like, oh, these guys are bad and evil. Well, I can get me some of that. And then, of course, what, what does a girl do when she flirts? She just acts bratty because that worked on dad. It's, I roll him. I swear to God, he's right. Remember that thing he did where it was just show up, bring beer, bring, bring beer, be naked. I think that's girl game in 2024. And I, I'm I'm very sad to say that the, the age of being charmed is over. It's over, man. It's over. But back to the anger thing. So a lot of guys get angry about this, and it's because anger ultimately doesn't stem from uh, a pain. Like, I know a lot of people say, oh, getting divorced, great. Oh, getting zeroed out. That's what does it. It's not the pain. Guys can suck up all kinds of pain. Uh, the part that hurts is the betrayal, the being duped, the, the fact that the way you thought everything worked doesn't work that way. Like, imagine that waking up, you wake up, well, you don't have to, you don't have to imagine that. Chances are if you've here, you've had it to some extent, but you wake up one day and find out something you've held on to, like you wouldn't believe is now just not only not true, but detrimental for you to believe. I know some of the more, uh, heinous stories I hear are ones where, you know, wife does something, wife does some shit. I don't care why she did it. Maybe it's because he was fat. Maybe because he was lazy. Maybe because she's a crazy bitch. Who knows? Cheats on him, develops an alcohol problem, beats the kids, something. And the guy is like, okay, time to cash in on that relationship equity. I need to help. Uh, she cheated on me. My family's got my back. My friends have got my back. You know, she did the wrong thing. I did the right thing. Therefore, I'm in the right. And then all of a sudden they find out that their friends take the wife's side. Well, you know, she wouldn't have cheated on you if you weren't working so much. Well, when I wasn't working so much, she was. And if, if it's that, it's like, well, she cheated on you because you didn't earn enough. It's always it's always something you did. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. So that kind of hurts. That's like, dude, we've been friends for years. I even remember that in the military. The one thing that kind of hit me wasn't wasn't being charged with espionage. I'm like, I didn't do shit, so I can beat that. It wasn't the 14 months of hell, although that fucking sucked. In prison camp bullshit. The part that really got to me was that I was... Eh, <clears throat> I don't want to say the perfect sailor because it's like really cocky to say, but I was pretty goddamn good. I was the top of his class guy, did the things... It actually cost me a couple promotions because there was a couple times where like, yeah, we need you here and we're trying to promote more women in the military. And so I got passed up on promotion. I got a guy that was arrested for child porn, got promoted ahead of me. Like that's that's how required I was there. But everything I did was I essentially held departments together. So I'm really fucking good. And, uh, you know, a lot of people got their careers kind of springboarded. They got promoted off of my work. And I'm not bitter about that. I don't care. It's like, that's good. We'll supposed to be working together as part of a team, right? Of course, the part that got to me was now that I need some help. Like, what the hell is going on? I'm in a strange land with strange French people doing strange, corrupt things. All of them turned on me. And that's, that's the part that gets guys. It's that everything you thought you believed, everything you thought you built, it didn't exist. Saved. You've been saving money for years, and it turns out your wife was spending it behind your back, and then finally you need some money for some reason. You look in the thing, and it's empty. Now is it just empty? It's like ten thousand in debt, and then your family. Some guys, their family takes their wife's side. Well, just try to make things better. It's not because they actually want you to be happy. It's not because they want you to thrive. It's because they hate conflict and they prefer women over men. Sisterhood, Uber, Alice, preference. Men partially prefer women over men. And women always prefer women over men. You put that, you put that on a guy, add a little bit of pain, snaps. Zeroed out anger. And of course he's angry. And this is the worst part because people are, I don't know what the proper word is here. I don't want to say terrified. I will definitely say averse. I think averse is, is a fair word to use here. To male anger. Because ultimately, everybody knows after men get angry, the next escalation is men getting violent. And as much as we can watch Black Widow do that, I don't know why every girl in every fighting movie has to do that same scissor kick, flip around Mexican wrestling luchador move. Whatever girl it is, that's always the move. I think it's because it gives you a chance for a quick ass shot and then give her a plausible reason. Well, 
She's only 120 pounds, so she has to do that rotational flip thing to take out the 220 pound Russian Spetnaz cyber warrior. <laughs> it's like, fuck, okay. Um, yeah, everybody's terrified of it. Women, terrified of male anger because they are terrified of male violence. It's not even a, uh, well, I do it because of this. No, it's instinct, man. It's just in your brain. It's like, bro, this ain't the play. Get the fuck out of here. And so generally speaking, what do people do? They attempt to shame anger. You know, how dare you be angry, you son of a bitch. Calm the fuck down. Don't be angry. Don't be a bitch. And it taps into a lot of guys' inherent shame. I don't know how it got there. Glover talks about it. No more Mr. Nice Guy. So this isn't particularly controversial red pill stuff, but something has happened over the last however many years that have vilified male qualities at the expense of female qualities. Now, nobody wants a violent society where everybody's just walking around graping each other and punching each other in the neck. Obviously, some civilization there is a good thing. But there reaches a point where it kind of gets to the, 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 the too far gone, where you start to throw out the baby with the bathwater, and that's kind of what's there. So the worst thing that happens now is you tell all of these angry guys that they should be ashamed for being angry. And that anger turns into resentment. That resentment builds up and it puckers up. And it, when it blows up, it blows up in all kinds of weird ways. Some people are crazy. They just need that one thing to flip. You put them in this situation, they end up shooting up a school. You get a guy who's more well-adjusted, put him to the situation. What does he do? He develops a drinking problem. You get another guy. What does he do? Hookers. What does he do? Poly. There's always like different ways that kind of manifest that separate human behavior from the norm, right? And all this is because men have been, uh, is brainwashed a good word or gas? I gaslit. Men have been gaslit into not allowing themselves to be justified in being angry. And that's kind of like the red pill, a big part of it. It's underlying. Most guys want there to get laid, but that underlying anger, it's there and everybody kind of knows it, but nobody needs to address it because we're all on the same page here. That's why, that's why articles are called like how to get laid like a warlord, which pissed off so many. There was like a Netflix show that used that or CSI Miami or something. These incels on the red pill talking about this stuff. Because, uh, yeah, oh, a warlord like Genghis Khan. Oh, that's raping and pillaging. You don't want to do that. And that's why it wasn't called, you know, relationship strategies. It was called dread. You know why? Because that bitch wife needs to fear this. She needs to get this shit out of her system. Fucker. You have to address that anger. Because if you don't address it, it's, it's kind of similar to, to women. And this is one of those things. Male strategy or female strategies adopted to male sensibilities. I would argue the anger phase is very similar to fogging. You know, the tool there where you want to acknowledge that a girl had emotions, but you don't want to validate them. Because that's generally how women communicate. They have feelings and that feeling, they use conversation in order to process how that feeling manifests their reality. Because for women, reality isn't an abstract, like the world, the way it works. For them, reality is, their truth is a canon of their own personal experience. Anywho, so the one thing, the one thing you don't want to do, it's an escalatory gesture. It's, it's, it's bad strategy. It never has a positive benefit when you're talking to a girl and she starts running her mouth about some gobbledygook because she feels it's true and to tell her her feelings aren't real. I, I say this often, telling a girl her feelings aren't real is like telling a guy the earth is flat. The only people that buy into that are, are fucking crazy. So then that leads you with a problem, like for, and this is where it's going to tie into men thing. For a woman, how do you acknowledge her feelings while at the same time not taking them so seriously that she believes it to be true? I think you're cheating on me. I'm not cheating on you, babe. That's what a cheater would do. He would deny, so you must be doing it. And you're like, how do I get out of this double bind situation? If I admit to something, I'm guilty of it, and you're mad. If I don't admit to something, you assume I'm lying. You get mad. Well. If you can't win the game, you flip the table. That's the problem. The problem is you're playing her game into her frame, right? So what do you do? Amused mastery. Am I now? Oh, that's great. Hey, if I'm cheating on you, you'll be the first one to let know. There's a green amplify. Actually, I'm getting a blowjob under this table right now. I didn't want to say anything because it felt good and you were kind of reeling the vibe. You'd be quiet. It's also fogging. Things have been, di things have been different lately. I've been out of the house. I can totally see how you'd get there. 
see what the fogging did? It acknowledged, I can see how you would get to the point where you'd think accusing me of cheating on you is a valid thing. Full stop. It's not, but you're wrong. It's not, but you're right. It's just, yes, I understand the chain of events that got you to this running of your mouth right now. And this is the, the female strategy adopted to male sensibilities. Because with men and anger, you have to do a similar approach. That's the only way that a guy can get past it. If you're angry, angry is the anger is the only social emotion. Women are like, yeah, men should men should uh, validate their feelings more. All right. Angry and horny your feelings. Not like that. I want you to cry on camera. It's like, fuck off. Oh, geez, Rolo didn't even notice you in the chat. That's why those red pill guys constantly overuse the fuck your feelings line. Well, to be fair, that's mostly because I just want them to go away and die. <laughs> Here, madam, you're not going to get your traditional conservative grift off of our nonsense. You can fuck right off. <laughs> And take your Matt Walsh bullshit with you and his stupid plushy baby doll. Yeah, another one. Oh, yeah, so you guys have got examples in there. That's an interesting opinion. I believe you. All kinds of things you can say. And that's the point. It's not so much about what you say. It's the intent behind what you're saying it and what you're trying to accomplish. That's what I love about frame is that you can have two people doing the exact same thing. One guy has frame. One guy has no frame. And the, the outcomes are completely different. It boggles people's mind where it's like, I'm doing exactly what that guy's doing. Yes, but that guy has a six pack and he's doing it. And you're a fat, lazy bastard that has a bunch of emotional baggage tied to his thing and his hands won't stop shaking. So you are not doing the same thing. It just appears to that way if you're autistic. Anywho, back to the anger thing. So anger is a social emotion. What does that mean? That means anger requires a pain and a grievance. Two things. Most emotions are very visceral and just like one thing. You know, crying is because you're sad. Horny is because, you know, testosterone's up and up. Anger? No, it's social. It needs something there. Could you be more specific with a chuckle? <laughs> well, Nick, I'd argue that's more, that's more amused mastery. <laughs> but yes, in fairness. Ah, oh, mystery is David D'Angelo now. Son of a bitch. All right, maybe I shouldn't watch it now. I'm I, I even have the tab. It's sitting right there. I just get it the button. I've been terrified to do it. Oh, uh, anger. Yeah. So your wife divorcing you and taking the kids, that's a pain. That's not necessarily what it takes to get zeroed out, but her doing that and then deciding, you know, the church turns on you. You guys said it was till death do us part. Aren't you supposed to be here helping me achieve that? I'm working at it. Why is she not working at it? They're like, no, 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 man. Women are right. You're a piece of shit. And then that's what hurts the guys. It's the grievance. It's that that bitch did it on purpose. It's that everything I thought I believed to be true, now that it's being tested, it's turned out to be a lie, and I feel stupid. A lot of it is, a lot of anger is based in shame, too. That's the other grievance part. I feel so stupid. I thought that if you did all the right things, you married your high school sweetheart, and she was a virgin, and I went to the right church, and I donated the right thing, and I worked really hard, and everything would work out right. This big, huge, covert contract. And then the first time your girl got bored... And you decided to sleep with the pastor or something, anything, doesn't even matter. Or she decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go to Vegas, spend his pension away, and then come back with a sob story about, I didn't mean for it to happen. I just accidentally fell down and slipped on a dick 30 times. Oh my God. All 30. 29, I could believe, but not 30. Yeah, it makes a guy angry. A, a guy's ashamed too. And then a guy looks at everybody in his social circle, everybody who was giving him advice, everybody who was reinforcing this life. All of his friends are like, yeah, let's go to church together, bro. Let's be great men together. All of those guys, that Disney fantasy, I think is what Rolo calls it, the Disney fantasy. What about all this? And then everybody's like, well, you just didn't do it hard enough. I always love, that's such like the bullshittest answer. And this is why a lot of guys get angry about it too. You could be the Steven Crowder. You do everything right, but you're a bit of a prick, which it's not illegal to be a prick. He's from Montreal originally. So I think that's almost like just the MO of anybody from Le Ville Mar or the, the South, South, uh, Ile de Sardes. <laughs> Seriously, all the wannabe Myrans can't get shit like women are emotional, neurotic, and need guidance from men line out quick enough, which would be great. I would much prefer, though, if they'd also get the here's how you do guidance thing quick enough, too. Because yelling bro 500 times as fast as possible ain't convincing people of shit. Uh, but I'm, uh, stop getting me off topic. Uh, 
yeah, so you feel ashamed of it. You feel duped. And then you look at everybody around you. And as a guy, like your inner conspiracy starts to kick in. It's not that everybody hates you, but if they did, this is exactly how they would act. Yes, maybe there's not lead in the groundwater. Maybe the lizard people aren't taking the Illuminati Jews and doing your thing. But if they were, this is what it would look like. And so your mind starts to think about these things, starts to process the world, builds. Technically, it, it builds new mental models due to the increased neuroplasticity that comes with anger. That is psychologically the survival state or the survival trait that allowed anger to thrive. Because obviously us beating each other over the head with clubs is not going to make a conducive society evolutionary wise. But what does? What does make it conducive is that anger both signals to the group, hey, stop fucking me over or I'm going to start cracking heads. So people start acting right. And then the other side, once something happens that alters your worldview to the point that you have like a fight or flight angry response, your brain's like, all right, let's take a step back. Let's figure out what's going on here. That's the two parts of anger. There's the social element and then there's the neuroplasticity element. And this is where the guidance part comes in, like uh, not that guidance, but like a different guidance part is that. What do you do now? You're angry, right? And guys don't know. Guys have no idea. I haven't I haven't talked about it in forever, but I remember. Like, I'm one of those guys. <laughs> this is a horrible story. I get a chuckle out of it, but when I tell it, people are like, oh, my God. Personal story. Um. I think I was 18, maybe 19. I ended up fighting my stepdad. I, I came from one of those houses where you're not a man until you beat up your old man. And he hated me. He hated me for most of my life, which fair. Fair. I was a bit yappy. I can, I can get behind that. Big, burly Bushman logged. Looked like a, a Santa Claus meets a Viking. Irish fucker, too. Anyway. I can't remember what he was doing. It was something he, he was walking over to my mom and it was just that right moment where I'm like, yeah, if I don't stop him, something's going to happen. So I got in his face. He got in my face. He started trying to choke me. We fucking got into a scrap and dude, don't get me wrong. No way in hell was I coming out of that one alive. <laughs> you get, he's been working in the bush for 40 years. I'm an artist. Like, you know how that fight would go, but I didn't, I didn't back down. I'm like, whatever. If you believe in something strong enough for an ass whooping, yeah, you believe in it. If you don't believe in it, then you don't. Anyways, we got pulled apart before anything got too had. And it was the weirdest thing is that after that moment, he started liking me. It was a really weird lesson that I never knew I needed to learn until I learned it. Where even if you're going to lose a fight, just the act of standing up for yourself gets you points. It doesn't mean. It doesn't mean anything. It's just, you know, people fuck with people because you let them. So just don't let them. And like I said, if you believe it enough for an ass whooping to get an ass whooping over it, then you, then it's okay. You know? Anyway, uh, and then the next day he sat me down. We, it's the very first and only father son talk we have ever had. And it was so funny because at the time, like you go through like 18, 19 years of like shitty stepfather shit. And then all of a sudden one day he starts talking to you like a man. It comes across more like, Oh, I regret this already. <laughs> I should have, I shouldn't have done nothing because this is worse than the fight. <laughs> but he told me a story and it, and there's a point to this. There, I'm getting to this. There's actually a reason I'm telling this. It's not because I want you to think I'm awesome or a victim or some shit. There's actually a, 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 a practical reason for this one. Tells me the story about how his dad used to beat the shit out of his mom all the time. And then one day he just went, that's it, old man, you're going down. He's like, I put his head through the fucking stove and sent him to the hospital. He put his dad in the hospital. And for him, that was like, you know, everybody's like, hey, what's this rite of passage? We need to have those again. Well, there. I've talked to men that were from a bygone era that did some hard ass shit. And here's here's your rite of passage. You're not a man until you beat the shit out of your old man. All right. Go forth, Mr. Religious Zealot. Go teach your men to go teach your children to be men. Better. Mask up, sir. Get that mouth guard in because you don't want to end up losing the tooth because your kid's tired of this shit. I doubt it's Paul's story, although I'm sure most guys have similar stories, but I guarantee you mine is mine. I was there. I didn't see Paul. So what's the point of all this and what does this have to do with anger? I, I kind of I reflecting back on it because a big part of the red pill is self-reflection. Look back to your life. Why did you think the things you did? Why were my mental models a certain way? And a lot of it was just rebelling against that. I think uh, Rolo calls it promise keepers. 
which is one of the worst mental models, like the worst Disney fantasy that guys ever get. And this is a big reason why there's anger. It's because mom is a bitch. And I, I don't mean like we all love our moms. I get it right. But mom's a bitch. She complains about dad in front of the kids. She divorces dad in front of the kids. She has custody of the kids. So the kids only see one side of the story. They see a girl who they love more than anything in the world. Everybody loves our moms. We all love our moms. A lot of black America has like a very love hate relationship. Like I love my mom, but she's a bit of a hoe. But at the same time, like that's, that's what I got. Dad was never there. Dad was divorced. Dad was always working. You know, dad's not there. So you get one side of the story. You get mom filling your head with all these complaints about what an asshole dad is. And so you as a kid think, you know what? This woman matters more to me than anything. And I hate seeing her so angry at this other person. So I am going to make sure I never do what that guy does. That guy who knocked her up and gave her four kids and 20 years of marriage and a good divorce settlement. And is why she's sitting here in this house right now. I am going to never do what that guy does because I never want to be that kind of guy. <laughs> never want to be that kind of guy that my mom fell for and stuck around with, but complains about now. Probably one of the worst things ever. One of the worst things ever for guys. And I, I do find when it comes to getting past the anger phase, a lot of guys like me, that was kind of my thing. But I talk to other guys and they get there, too, where they kind of they kind of learn. They're like, oh, like mom was just bitching about dad because, you know, if mom's not bitching, she doesn't care. And maybe, you know, dad actually wasn't as bad as she said. He wasn't cheating on her or he was, but that's because she didn't put out or like she'd been a dead bedroom for five years. And so he finally cheated and then she divorced and took all his money. It's not so much that like you forgive him, but you're like, I get it. And for me, it was I realized like this guy he didn't have a chance when this stuff came. Like, what was his dad teaching him? The fact that his dad stopped beating him when he was drinking was like the lesson that he learned about being a man. He learned you don't have to be drunk and angry all the time. Like he was still angry, but he was sober and a hard worker. So you kind of you're like, it's not even a forgiveness thing. It's just I get it. I, I get why he is the way he is. I get why my parents weren't teaching me the good lessons and why I became a promise keeper or why. Like, I love my mom to death, but she was thoughting around and that caused a lot of issues now. And then the fact that I tried to rebel against everything she didn't like was the reason that I had such a hard time growing up with women. Like, you come to terms with all of this stuff. And this is ultimately where I'm going to get with, like, the, the, the five stages and how to get out of it stuff. So it's, it's interesting to see. Interesting to see. Anyways, uh, let's, let's add some levity. Let's do some humor. Hey, brother, who do you think is the funniest member of Rule Zero Squad? Now? What's your favorite comment joke of theirs? I think Ryan brings good laughs. He does. <laughs> Ryan is like British humor. It's like Monty Python. <laughs> People are like, and if you get it, you laugh your ass off. If you don't get it, you're like. Fuck <laughs> Ryan. People just don't get his humor. Who's the funniest one on there? You mean besides John Fitch? <laughs> I think John Fitch is the funniest member of Rule Zero, but he's unintentionally funny. One of the robot dogs. The same this robot dog in real life was pretty surreal and terrible. And yeah, Cappy's pretty funny. He can be pretty funny too. Who's the funniest one? You know the funny part? Millennials will know instantly that dun 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 four notes, and they're like, "Dude, that's fucking Oizo." Yes. Isn't that crazy? How although technically just the one bass beat would have been enough for guys to get. It's like I know that song. Anyway, so five stages. <laughs> the funny of Zarks is the first thing I see when I got here. Dude, it does make me laugh. Uh, O-I-Z-O. Um, yeah, there's five stages. I talked a bit about it last week, too, but. You got to know them. There's the negotiation. There's the denial. There's anger. There's acceptance. Anger is right in the middle, which is funny because anger phase is like the first part of guys getting here, right? Guys, by the time when they first start taking the pill, it's usually because they're pissed off and they angrily type some shit into Google and then they find a rational mail article or heaven forbid a Ryan Stone article. Now, I guess I have enough. I can start saying that. So, like, yeah, they find a Ryan article or wine more, please, or whatever. But that was always funny where everybody's like, yeah, the five stages of, of taking the red pill. We only you only show up like stage three. Uh, TOF five dollars, 72 cents. Super chat. Thank you, sir. You're wrong again. Andrew Wilson says if you join his religious community, the old women will shame her for going to Vegas and sleeping around. You know what's funny? Like, I'm not going to shit on Andrew. I like the guy. Smokes a little much, but whatever. And I think we kind of said this. We had a 
not really a debate because he was kind of talking over me and he wasn't really listening, but, but it's fine. Whatever. He's running his brand the way he runs his brand. What I will say is this. I have no problem if he succeeds. Good luck, sir. Go get him. I won't stand in your way. It's just kind of like, it reminds me of, you know, I don't know if you guys have kids, but if you ever had a kid who hits about the age of 13, they get that I'm running away from home phase. That's it, dad. I'm fucking out of here. I'm running away from home. You're like, I wish you the best, son. I, that's kind of the same vibe I get here. It's like, he'll be back by dinner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nervous laugh, eh? Oh, that sucks. Yeah, you can't be nervous on this stuff. I think that's the... One of the main things that, like a no fear level of calmness, these conversations, don't be intimidated by somebody. One of the things that makes me laugh, though, about this is like, how are you guys, like, how is anybody intimidated by some online talking head, like a Ben Shapiro or, or like, oh, he's got a million followers. Like, who fucking cares? Look, the day that you can no longer go grocery shopping because you're going to get mobbed by a crowd is the day that I'll get intimidated by your clout. Until then, nobody gives a shit. Like, who's the, who's the biggest guy that you would know of that has anything to do with the red pill? Probably Andrew Tate, maybe Pearl. Millions of people. Millions. I have yet to meet one person in real life who has any idea who the fuck these people are. This is why I tell people I'm an author now. They're like, oh, because if I tell them about YouTube, they're like, oh yeah, so like, you know Andrew Tate? And they're like, what? I'm like, oh fuck, never mind. You know Pearl? Like, oh, what the hell are you talking about? And I'm like, oh, right, you have a job and a family and kids and everybody loves you. Of course you don't know who these fucking people are. Do you have an unemployed brother-in-law? Ask him. He'll tell you. Yeah. Did I catch a super chat from Asanaji? Let me go look. Sorry, man, if I missed it. Let me go back quickly. Oh, damn, there was a few. All right, my bad. I kind of got into a, uh, I kind of got into a, into a role here. Let's get these super chats out of the way make a little note to this one. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. At what level of frequency, splitting plates wise, a man should consider he had enough and do his transition into an LTR? There is a great married red pill essay that explains exactly how to answer this one. And the title of it is, You Don't Want At, You Don't Want Us Answering That. And that is not... That is a should question. What should I do? What, what life should I live? And then you don't, you don't want anybody answering that for you. You don't. Because if I give you that answer, I will give you my answer. Not even necessarily the answer that I did, but the answer that I would want to be true. That's why you get a lot of chicks who are like super hoes and they date thugs and they're like, oh, you should be a nice guy and treat her well. It doesn't work on her and she knows it doesn't work on her, but she wants it to. It's the same thing here. You ask 500 people, how many plates did you get free in LTR? You know what they're going to tell you? They're going to run their mouth about the worldview. Andrew Wilson is going to say zero. She should be your first. First date. That's it. Marry her. Fucking eight kids. Chain smoke. I'll see you in later. Most of us, like Rolla will say, probably, you know, get as many as you can. Uh, Myron says 50 before the age of 30. Uh, what's his stupid name? The Who's Green Line Boy again? Why am I drawing a blank? His fucking name. Anyways, he says 30 girls before 30. And everybody's going to give you a different answer, but ultimately, that's for you to answer. You're going to go do that. Go fuck as much as you can, as much as you want to, and then one day you're going to wake up and be tired of it and change to do something else. That's it. It's a very Taoist thing. If you really have to ascribe like a, like a philosophical or, or, you know, ought-based way of looking at it, the Taoist thing is when you do something, don't do it half-assed. Do it. Give it your all. And when you're done... Just put it away and let it go. You know, the lifestyle wasn't yours. It was just your turn. Most people are going to find that they chase the things that most interest them. You're going to spin a bunch of plates. Like, heck, another personal story that kind of gets to that. For me, it was fun. I was doing it. Like, I had, I was an ugly duckling. Well, not an ugly duckling, but a late bloomer. Promise keepers, that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I found the mystery method. Pick up. All of a sudden, hit like 23, started hitting my stride, making up for lost time. That is awesome. Yeah, I'd only think I'd only uh, been with like one or two girls by the time I was 23. And I was like, Jesus, And then bam, 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 bam. God, I started getting better. Took a bit to ramp up. There was a huge military schedule on the way too, But by the end, it was just great. It was a system. I had it down pat and it was fun. And I was sailing and we had had a foreign port in Vancouver. We 
sailed from Vancouver Island to Vancouver. Anything's a foreign port as long as it's not in your jetty, by the way. It's, it's not. I mean, Vancouver's foreign now, but it, it didn't used to be. It's only recently Hong Coover. And there was a stripper from my buddy's bachelor party that I was dating at the time, among a couple other girls. She, fuck, I can't remember. I think she, I, I, you know, it's probably safe to say she flaked on me, but I might have flaked on her. It's been too long and I don't remember. I, I, the only thing I remember very clearly from that time is I had an old Windows phone with a stylus. Remember when phones had styluses? Yeah, yeah, that was the day. Anywho, it turns out one of my plates, who's my now, you know, old lady. She happened to be there at the time. She was on a date and she flaked on that guy because he was a prick. And so I'm like, and she's like, oh, I just wish you were out here. It'd be so much fun. I'm like, I am over at the key. She goes, what? Yeah. And a buddy of mine uh, ended up taking us to this bondage party in East Hastings, which if you don't know, that's like, hey, you going to come to this party in Inglewood or Oakland? You're like, sure, man, let's go. <laughs> You're like, Ugh. that's what East Hastings is. It's fentanyl alley meets like gang stuff. It's horrible. Anyway, so we're down there. So she has like this super dangerous date surrounded by homeless people and armed thugs and shit like that. And there's the sailor walking in like he has, doesn't have a care in the world, which I didn't. Cause I'm like, what are they going to do to me that the Navy hasn't done already? <laughs> we had our fun, did our thing. Next day, I'm just like, you know what? Like. Went to a bondage party. Everybody was wearing body paint. There was dicks and boobs and people getting whipped all around me. And I was just like, eh. I was like, we should start dating. I'm kind of done with all this shit. And then that was it. That was just it. One day. So you'll get there too, but I can't tell you how to get there. I can't tell you when to get there. You have to discover that on your own. In fact, you don't want anybody to answer that. Because half of the fun is figuring this out for yourself. And if you don't figure it out for yourself, you're going to resent it. Rob talks about the one behind club where you realize like, oh, there was so much that I left on the table because I was too scared to go for it or because I followed somebody's advice. The whole point of making this decision on your own is so that way you don't ever regret making it like oh, I should have done something different. It's like, no, man, at the time you made the best choice from place of abundance. And I find like it just you don't have any resentment. Like, have you ever heard? Rolo, for example, resent his, what is it, 27, 36 years with his wife now? Never heard an ounce of resentment for it. Never a day where he's like, you know what, I could have done something different. No. It's because he got it out of his system. And then when he wanted to do something else, he did it. No regrets. And that's what you have to do. So whenever anybody, whether it's me, whether it's Rolo, whether it's fucking Myron, or that big, goofy, redheaded gummy bitch, starts telling you how you should live your life, in Minecraft, punch them in the face. Fuck off. Don't tell me what to do. I'll figure it out for myself. I don't want a why and a what. I, I would like a how, but that's it. Uh, Null, 20 euro super chat. I have not understood what you said with do not let your audience influence you until that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Audience capture, man. It's a bitch. It's a bitch. And I know that's like, I hate, I hate talking. Like, I like talking about it, but I hate talking about it on stream because it reminds me of like the comedian's when they have that, oh, what's with the airline food? Or that's like a specific comedian concern right now that the audience does not relate to. That's when you kind of like lose touch. Yeah, but at the same time, I'm like, it was it's a Nina phenomenon. We got to fill time. Anyways, uh, thank you for the $20 super chat. Four heartfelt euros of fuck you. And then I still miss Carl. Have a nice day. You have a nice day too, sir. You have a nice day too. Uh, let me get back to the bottom of the chat. Make sure I didn't miss any super chats. We're on our way out. There we go. Uh, follow through is a skill that pays dividends for life. Always does. Now, where did I leave off? Uh, five stages. Let me see. Uh, good reason. Angry, pain, grievance. You know what? We kind of hit on all those anyway. So we'll move on to the next one. Like getting out of the anger phase. That's the next one. What do you have for time? 50 minutes. We'll do some bants for a couple minutes here. Get back on schedule. Sorry, that super chat was actually pretty, pretty, um, pretty good. So. I might even make a note for that. Maybe make a clip. One of the few things I'll actually make a clip for. Let's poke fun at somebody and then we'll banter for a bit. Boom, what's up fam? Got some big news to share that unfortunately is not so good. So I'm gonna jump right into it. You're gonna watch this video and you're gonna cry. At least we can laugh at your ass as you cry like in, in the corner like a little girl in the fetal position. The funniest thing is, too, apparently, what people are telling me is that all he does now 
is like show off the fuck trophies for clout. And like part of me wants to give him a Matt Walsh treatment. But at the same time, I'm like, I kind of like it now where he forgets that I exist because I don't know if you guys remember that guy's fucking insane. Like the fact that he let that some chicks like, yeah, throw a baby into me with them crazy ass jeans. I don't know how the fuck that happened. She must be crazy, too. But now they probably got a baby with those herbivore eyes and raising up to be one of those chicks that's probably going to be on the news. Like she'll be on mugshot bays where you see the girl, nice brown eyes, whatever. And what's her charge? Like vehicular manslaughter. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Fuck, this stuff makes me. How do you not laugh, man? Like, seriously. If I if I had to go to somebody who had no idea about any of this and explain the whole iceberg to them, the whole lore of the situation, I would sound like a fucking crazy tard. Wait, let me. OK, so wait, wait. what's this? What's the six foot chick have to do with anything? And what what's with their volleyball coach and the me too thing? And then she's yelling at black people like it's hard to explain. But if you're there and you have the right level of neat, you'll probably understand it. And so the other guy, he was a fed. But he gave up being a fed because he likes men. But now he's broke. So he needs money, but he's living the life. It's like sort like when you put it like that, it sounds bad. And then the other guy, he kickboxes, but not really well. But he mostly launders money. But then he's also a pimp. But now he's trafficking women and he's in jail. But he's live streaming for 20,000 people what he does in jail, which is mostly push ups. When you put it, but he's got a Bugatti. What's a Bugatti? It's like, I don't know. Like when I put it like that, it sounds bad. Yes. The other guy, he, he, he liked clout so much and he had a family and he was going to move, but he decided to storm the Capitol first. Wait, wait, he admitted to federal crimes on like a live stream or like five live streams. But yeah. And who the fuck is this guy? It's like, I can't do this, man. I, one of these days I'll probably have one of those sit down with uncle Clary. Let me explain to you. My path through the fucking manosphere. It all started when this band, this guy from Venice Beach decided that he was going to stop playing guitar and get a degree in evolutionary psychology. And you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam Whiskey, $4.99 super chat. If every artist had Ryan's stepdad, we'd have way better Navy officers. Oh, dude, I would never. I would. I would never be an officer, sir. My parents were married. No, Navy officers, it's like um, they eat their own. They're a horrible, vindictive crew. Peacetime military problems, right? Careerists always end up taking the charge. And then once like combat actually happens, they get weeded out pretty quick. But usually a lot of people have to die under their command for that to happen. So, yeah, we're not going to go there. Anyways. Getting out of the anger phase. Let's do that. You want to tell me why the majority of people that voted yes, I can be submissive are men? Just want to talk a little bit about why I love women. And the majority that said no are women? I would love y'all to ponder that for a fucking second. I love how you know, they always make sure, by and large, they shower. The feminine energy that, that girls put out, it's just, it's magnetic. You think I can be submissive? I adore it. I remember at the end, because I, I viewed one of her TikToks, and so they kept showing me more. She was just throwing anything at the wall, anything to get attention. We started talking about everything and anything. I'm like, dude, I still laugh. I have, a, I have an old Red Pill Coffee. You got to check that one out where I talk about her, where she got mad because her boyfriend's like, I don't want to date a girl that's got an OnlyFans. So she like breaks his, breaks his phone and then twerks on a TikTok for three straight minutes to teach him a lesson. I was like, Jesus Christ. It's not an ad. It's a full on video. Look, I'll, I think it's still there. Let me make sure. Every now and then I notice some things are accidentally made private. So. She's a Canadian chick. She's out of Vancouver, too. If you didn't know. Dating is kayfabe. The Pat Stedman episode. Dude, that was one of my favorites. It really was. The Yanis Fiamengo's an idiot. Fuck, I can't remember. Maybe it was called Canadian. Oh, yeah, there she is. Here, here. If you guys want to have some good fun, watch some of the old videos. That's a good one. It makes me laugh. It makes you laugh, too. Anyways, getting out of the anger phase. So that is, that's ultimately the question you got to ask yourself. 
yes, I get it. I'm angry. Yes, these guys told me there's a reason I'm angry. It's a valid reason, which goes a huge way. I got fogged. I can see how you'd feel that way. Literally that. I can see how you'd feel that way. And you're not wrong. So where do you go from here? Well, it's one of those art of the deal Trump things where the way to talk to somebody is you appeal to them on their level and then you bring them to your level. But as most guys in the red pill will tell you, don't don't try to red pill your friends because it's just a covert contract. I can save him. You can't save him. He doesn't want to be saved. If he did, he'd start doing work. So what we did in the, in, as an alternative is guys would save themselves, but they would leave, you know, meticulous notes along the way. So it sounds almost like a, it's like a conversation. I'm talking to you. I'm swapping notes. You're swapping notes. We're helping each other. Not really. I'm helping myself. You're helping yourself. And every now and then we look over our shoulders, see what the other guy is doing. It's like, oh, that's not bad. Oh, that one there. I probably wouldn't do that. Oh, I'll just write this stuff. I'll do this stuff and I'll write this down. So in a way, it, it takes advantage of the requirements of a personal journey of self-actualization. If you want me to make it sound fucking gay. Um, you're getting your shit together, you know, sorting it out. You take that personal journey, you make it accessible to others in a communal space so that others can get it from each other. Now, occasionally you're going to get something, some guy, some asshole like me, who's preaching it or teaching and whatever. And that's accounted for too. It's because teaching is the easiest way to learn something. I've, I've talked about this tons. You guys have probably heard this. I'm going to say it again. So just in case there's a new guy, so shut up. When you read, when you hear something, when you listen to a podcast or whatever, and the numbers are not perfect, but they, they, basically it's right. When you listen to something, you remember like 10% of it, maybe. When you write something down, you remember maybe 15% of it. Taking notes, it's like 15%. Listening to a Joe Rogan podcast, 10%. When you read and write and listen, it's like, you know, 30% of what you remember. But if you teach something, you will remember something like 90% of what you got. And this is one of those things that people kind of have to learn. So like most forums, and this has always been a thing. They always turn into like a help forum at some point because, and this is a regression of the mean issue. Hipsters, highly interested people above the average in a certain sphere will come to a place and make it a kick-ass thing. doesn't matter if you're a Lego, Harley rider, red pill, anything. Super hyper-invested people, very good. That's why, if you notice, the first blogs were like Rolo, Roycey, Roosh. Like, where's the, where's the chain of like, I, and Dalrock, Ian Ironwood. There is, could you name six bloggers that have popped up in 2020 and, and above? Who you're like, dude, this is, this is it. No, there's not there. That's why they always came at the start, because those were the guys that had a specific level of OCD and interest and competence in a topic to actually, like, go with it. You have to get fucked over by women. You have to be a prolific writer. You have to be hyper interested in what is otherwise a very autistic and nerdy profession. Not doing it for the money because people weren't making money off the blogs. Then Rolo's blog was like 20 years of free. That's why I'm never going to give him shit. If I ever see him dancing with his ass out, yelling at the whatever chicks, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. You earned it, man. All these guys come in. I've been in the manosphere for six months. I'm going to start yelling at women. It's like, no, nah, man, he's been doing it for 20 years. Let him yell. <laughs> Get your stripes like everybody else. Uh, teaching. So yeah, teaching you learn it all. So what happens now is that guys... Oh, right, I was talking about the, uh, the thing. So what happens then is a lot of other people join. And the more people that join, by definition, you will start to regress to the mean. You're, it'll always swing everything towards 100 IQ. And what does that mean? That means more people have harder times understanding things. This is why everybody always says, oh, this place used to be better. It always used to be better. That's the problem with growth. You were technically part of the problem. The fact that you came in late means you were regressing it to the meat. Absolutely. 100% sure. I ruined things. Rolo ruined things. Everybody who came after ruined something. It's like that immigrant who gets off the boat and then turns around. It's like, get these fucking immigrants out of my country. It, that's essentially it. Hey, what's up? Guys, Swerve's got a new video coming out. I would go check it out. I don't know if he's finished it yet. It's going to be on Skyrim. Pretty, pretty good. Anyway, so once you get to a certain point, you have a lot of mouth breathers, neck, like the 100 IQ, the midwit style. They're not really interested. They're kind of confused. They don't know why things are the way they are. And they outnumber the competent and 
excited people by a lot. And so they drive everything to the norm. And this is the same phenomenon that like people who loved arcade fire back in the day. It's like, oh, now every hipster music is just mainstream. Oh, this restaurant was great before they became a chain restaurant. Oh, these movies were great until Disney bought it and made Star Wars into shit. Yeah, good old day stuff. There's actually a physical reason why it happens. Scientific reason. Regression of the mean. And that's why now you get your, your Myrans, your grifting types that are just like, hey, did you know women initiate 70% of divorces? Like and subscribe. Join my private community of masculine excellence. I have a six pack. You will love me. What's the first thing to do with their paycheck? I'm going to buy Coke and a hair piece. Like, Jesus Christ, man. I am the pinnacle of man. <laughs> Fucking hell. No wonder I don't respect anybody. How could you? Re how could I respect anybody? Like, look what we do for a living. Like, fuck you. <laughs> I can at least laugh. I'm sitting here staring at my little clown tassel with the little jingle bells going, oh, that was a fucking hilarious. And you guys are like, these are the most masculine clown jingles ever. Like, All right, fill your boots, man. Can't wait for that uh, VH1 behind the music seat where that was where everything went wrong. It turns out he was passing his wife around for clout. And then Sidney Watson asked him that fateful day, what about the cuck article? And that's when things went south. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, anyways. Yeah, don't quit while you're hot. That's how Roosh... Roosh didn't screw up because he quit when he was hot. Roosh screwed up because Roosh went Roosh. All he had to do was not do drugs, go crazy, and not have that girl... Like, it was that girlfriend, that five-year relationship was what fucked him up. Everybody's like, oh, it's the death of his sister. It's no, getting dumped by that chick in the Ukraine. His whole pickup thing was like, I'm going to finally get the woman. I'm going to Poland and Ukraine where they're hotter and they're better and nicer than these stupid Western women. And I'm going to live the life. And he had the life for a bit. And then the girl's like, you know what? I'm done. And he's like, damn it. Let me sprinkle some Jesus on this. <laughs> All right. Fill your boots, man. Sprinkle some Jesus on this. It's like, I don't know. I wish you luck, sir. I remember a guy with chiclet teeth had a bad lycosuction. He was hilarious and called himself hot dude. Forgot his name. Oh, don't be don't be angry at my boy, John. I like John. I know. I know everybody's got their issues, but he's always been polarizing that way. Let him live his life. That's what I say. Good on him. Only a sprinkle. Well, OK, it was a bit more than a sprinkle. You know, the funniest part, too, is I have been up front since day one about my opinions of other people, and I have no problem holding back. That's the one thing I love about this profession. You can shit on the manosphere, on the red pill, on traditional... You can shit on this stuff all day. But the one perk, the one perk that this job has that no other job has is that if I don't like a coworker or a peer or I think somebody's a fucking idiot at their job, I can just speak my mind and it doesn't cost me shit. <laughs> you don't have that at corporate work. You can't say Deborah and HR is a bitch because then Deborah and HR will have you fired. You can't be in the military and say my fucking asshole captain is blah, 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 because they'll put you in fucking jail. You can't talk shit to the officer like that. Are you crazy? But here? Oh, I can call that big gummy redhead bitch a fucking cunt. And what's going to happen? I'll probably get a super chat to the to the Centaur fund. Thank you, sir, for your $4.99 super chat. Even the chat is a joke. Take out the penny. Otherwise, he has to talk about the cuck article. OK, sir. OK. <laughs> Says the guy who got away with calling a captain a cocksucker. Well, it wasn't that he actually was a cocksucker. It's that he cock blocked me. And I didn't call him a cocksucker. I called him a cock block. Now, in fairness, I was the brand. I was like the youngest uh, the lowest ranking guy on the bridge. So it's like, it's not, I had anything to lose. If I was an officer, they probably would have hammered me for it. Although he hated officers too. So he just needed an excuse. Probably wouldn't have had an officer drinking with him in Seven Eleven, drinking, eating taquitos anyway. Oh, oh, there was a whole point was like how to get out of the anger phase. Yeah. The, the teaching and guidance, right? So what guidance is there? Well, there's no guidance. It's all self-study. It's all self-study. Everybody kind of goes through and iterates on things and leaves their own notes behind. It's, it's actually very similar to, and I had a series where if I was interviewing somebody and didn't fit into another category, I would call it Lloyd's Coffee House. Because that's what the enlightenment was. It was everybody sitting at this brand new thing. They're like, dude, you don't have to be drunk all day. We can make you coffee and you still won't get cholera. And they're like, really? Every social class would go pay a penny, get a coffee and hang out. 
sheep herders, we're talking to bankers, we're talking to politicians, we're talking to authors, we're talking to scientists. And the Scottish Enlightenment came out of that. Just a bunch of dudes sitting around swapping notes. And I always find it funny. Are you really comparing the fucking red pill to the Scottish Enlightenment? Maybe not in degree, but definitely in spirit. Definitely in spirit. Just put a bunch of guys together. We'll put our collective heads together and we'll sort things out. But we're all selfish pricks and we don't get along. We don't like each other. So we can't make it about being part of a collective. That's how chicks do it. Chicks get in a room and they're like, we're the besties. We're friends for life. And then they backstab each other constantly. Guys don't work like that guy. I hate you. You hate me. But hey, you might like this. Like, what's that? Oh, that's how you can make $10 million. Like, well, fair enough. Fuck you. Fuck you too. Birthplace of insurance. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was another thing that came out of it. A lot of people would do business deals in there. So you get, so how do you get out of the anger? And then a lot of guys, that's how you get out of it. I think it's one of the few things Peterson said, and I was like giving credit where it's due. One of the few things Peterson said that resonated. It was more of a replicated the red pill stuff, but I say it resonated. He goes, why are young men so angry? And then how do you stop being angry? And he goes, well, a lot of it is about processing. Once you process the anger, once you can wrap an intellectual veneer around it, it no longer makes you angry. If you still get angry about something, it's because you haven't processed it yet. And what is note swapping and all this stuff, if not processing your anger? Processing, you wanted guys to have more emotions? There you go. Anger, resolve. There's some, there's some emotions for you. So you write things down. And it used to be like everybody had to have a blog because that was the only way to write things down. Or maybe there was a forum like So Suave. So if you had enough to write your own blog, you would just do your own blog. But if you only had like the occasional thing that you wanted to write about that you could, then there was usually a forum or a Reddit space, subreddit or something like that. And you could do it too. And then eventually it got to the point where guys didn't have to add more. Most of the stuff is like, dude, this sounds exactly like, like there was so many times where I would see somebody have an example of a mental model. And I'm like, this sounds a lot like this one from last year, this one from two years ago, this one from five years ago. And Rolo's like, actually, that's like this one from 10 years ago. So there's not, it's not that we need another 20 years to hit, to mine all the stuff. There's really not a lot, not as much as you'd think. It's kind of something I realized after the two books. Like I don't have enough red pill stuff for a third book. There might be some small niche things, but it's not enough to fill a tome. What generally happens though, is it gets recycled and People word it differently, comes from a different perspective. You say the same thing 50 different ways, and eventually one of them will resonate with the guy. And that's kind of where you're at. And that's how, and that's how you get out of anger. The guy starts to accept women as the goofy creatures that they are. They do the things that they do. They, you know, forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. She's 28, and now she's got baby rabies. I'm not like that. I'm not like the other girls. Of course not. All the other girls said that too, though, just so you know. And then, you know, okay, dad did the best he could. Well, you know, mom is just a chick like any other chick. She's not a god. So they do what they do. And you realize, I just can't be mad at these people. And you don't feel duped. It's like everybody's duped. Nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. Everybody who's older than you has no idea how much the earth has shifted now. And all their advice is shit. And all the people the younger than you have no experience. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. And all the people who are the same age as you, most of them are just bobbleheading through life, just taking it one day at a time and letting life happen to you. So yeah, nobody knows what they're doing. You're in the, you're, but you're in that, you're in the same beneficial position that Socrates, I think it's Socrates, maybe Plato, where he's like, I'm the smartest man in the world because I know one thing more than everybody else. I know I don't know anything. And that, that was his thing. And you're kind of there. I realize that we are all stupid monkey meat puppets. The difference is I've written down some notes. I've read these guys' notes and I have an idea the direction I want to go. Just that very simple statement and the resolve to follow through on it is a huge thing. It makes a huge difference. And I, I, I've, I'm past the point myself. This is, my, this is my Clary ranting moment. I'm past the point myself where I want to bring guys with me on this. Amazing, fuck you. Do it yourself. Well, what are you doing online? Aren't you supposed to convince me? No, I'm not. I'm literally teaching here in order for me to remember stuff. This podcast started as my way of learning how not to trust people. That's why this started. You guys not know that? Redman Group, Anthony Johnson, that fucking mega hat guy, started a podcast, brought Rolo in, brought us in. Every week we talk about our dicks and whatever, same as the Rule Zero thing. And then Rolo at one point is like, yeah, like this is actually doing pretty well for you financially. Let's find a way to make sure everybody gets a paycheck out of it. And then I had my corporate moment where like, yeah, so we're going to make sure that everybody's treated fairly and gets paid. 
I look over at Anthony with his fucking Adderall stare. And I'm like, I better, I better come up with a plan B. Cause this is like when your company's like, I think we're done with layoffs. So everybody who's here right now, you'll be fine. You're like, Oh fuck. That means there's another round of layoffs and they just want us to be calm for a couple weeks while they sort it out. And sure enough, you're getting laid off. So that's when I started this. I'm like there, bam, this way, no matter what happens, I'm okay. And then it since morphed kind of similar to the email newsletter where, you know, I was writing books. So if I wanted to explore a topic, I found it was useful. Remember I was saying reading something, you, you remember 10% of it, writing something, 15% of it. Well, I was reading a lot of field reports. I was reading a lot of essays. I was listening to a lot of stuff, but I'm like, I haven't really taught anything. So if I teach it here, it's a way for me to get better at it. And so that's it. It was, this is a very selfish podcast. I am here for me to develop the skills that I need and learn the things that I need to learn. The fact that you guys are here and not, I'm not saying I don't want you here. I'm glad you're here. Love the super chats. You guys are, except for that guy, but everybody else, you're great. But ultimately, like I'd still be doing this if nobody was showing up. So that's how I learn. And every episode, you'll learn a little something. I'll come up with like a new turn of phrase, a new way to explain something. Maybe it's just after doing it the 15th time, I stop screwing up fucking the Devi acronym. You know, little shit like that. And that's kind of how you have to approach this stuff. And this is why that earlier quote somebody was saying about audience captures. That's why I'm terrified of that. I'm here as supposed to be the subject matter expert. And if I let you guys start driving content, then what the fuck happens to the expertise? It's gone. It's gone. It sounds great. But fuck, that's where we get. And that's how you get that stupid sex doll podcast with the goofy. Bo- like, hey, let me talk to this OnlyFans virgin about like, fuck off. Why are we here? big tits hanging out, fake glasses. And she's like, I'm actually a virgin. So I'm, I'm less of a whore than that chick there. You're like, really? I could see your asshole right now for $10 a month. Did I really want that, gr- that venti frappuccino or did I want to see your asshole? And to be fair, coffee frappuccinos are pretty good. I'm not telling you what to do with your money. I'm just saying. And even in America, they got that new uh, Trenta size. That's like the truck stop sized ones. Fucking crazy. It's crazy. It's like in Canada, how you buy your coffee in a cardboard box. The Timmy's box. Everybody knows that one. It's like boxed wine, but for Timmy's coffee. I don't think, do they have that in the States? Does that, do they? I don't know. Uh, My man, it's been ages. Yeah. So that's how you get out of the anger phase, ultimately. And we got one last thing. It's going to be a short one. So we're, we're coming near the end. We only got like 15 minutes to go. In the meantime... Let's shit on Matt fucking baby plushy Walsh. I don't usually post pictures of my kids online, but they're infants and you can barely see them. So, you know, it's, it's fine. But a YouTuber named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone, named Ryan Stone tweeted, showing off the F trophies for clout. So the babies are trophies that I'm showing off. It's perhaps not a surprise that a picture of a proud father would be so upsetting to the sort of man who clearly never had one. Fucking hate that guy, man. So much. And the worst part is there's like a demographic of people out there is like, that's that's a man. That's what I want to be. Right there. I, kids, how come you can't get me clout like his kids can? Dad, you work in a refinery. To Dad, you got an Adderall reduction. Anywho, uh, though the residual, residual anger phase, this is one that's always funny. So there's been a couple phases that I've noticed that guys go through and they're fairly predictable. Yeah. There's the five stages of grief, but then after that, the guy will start doing, changing his mental models, changes behaviors. His wife starts to fuck him. He starts to get laid. He starts to have plates, whatever, whatever his metric of success is. And then there's one point where it clicks. He finally understands. Frame is, that's why frame is such a hard definition. It's a hard thing to describe, but you can always tell when a guy has it. It's like porn. I don't know. I couldn't describe it, but I'll know it when I see it. So once the guy clicks and he understands and he starts to get some success, you enter, this is that phase I call it the six months of being an insufferable asshole. I wish there was a fancier name for it, like something more catchy and we'll wordsmith that later, but that's it. There is, and everybody, I went through it. MLD John went through it. I'm assuming Rolo did, but it would have been earlier before I knew him. But everybody has that phase where it's like, fuck you. I'm the goddamn man. Can't tell me shit. 
And it's great because they're like, I'm not angry anymore. I'm successful and fuck you. Yeah. And then, you know, you give it six months. And yeah, it's irritating. It grates on everybody's nerves. And you're like, oh, fucking hell. I'm tired of hearing about your goddamn <coughs> whatever. Excuse me. And then after like six months, maybe a year, if the guy is slow, he kind of settles into it as the new norm. He goes, OK, so. I got the sex thing sorted out, made up with my parents, you know, relationships doing well, or I have a bunch of plates right now and I'm having fun and you know, it's pretty easy to date girls and earning more money at work. So I'm actually more assertive. That's great. That's great. Now what? Now what? And then they realize, well, I get, girls are all kind of the same. It's like, oh, she just had her 28th birthday. We're probably going to break up soon. And the magic's gone. And you're like, I'm not really an alpha male. It's just, you know, this is what successful people do. And then you start to reflect. You realize that you actually weren't that six months of being an insufferable asshole was really what I call the residual anger phase. Because all the underlying grievances are still there. The pain is still there. But you've navigated yourself a pathway out. The hamster has found an exit to the maze. And so you're happy about that. It's like being. It's like being in a war. You're in World War II and you figured out a way to, to, we found out how to get to France. Awesome. We go straight to France and across the channel, do the beaches at Normandy. You're walking through, you're dodging bullets, you're taking out krauts. You're like, this is great. I'm so glad I'm no longer in a war. You're like, no, you're in a war. You're just successfully navigating it, you know? <laughs> Eamon Gill, $10 super chat. Is that your first super chat? Dude. You just broke your super chat cherry on me. I, this means I own you now. <laughs> but glad to have you and Rolo. Most of the red pill is becoming Brian damage. Dude, I like that term. I'm going to steal that. Did you do that on purpose? Or were you trying to say brain damage? Because isn't the uh, whatever guy's name Brian? Like calling it Brian damage is actually pretty fucking funny. Cappy's phase isn't over yet. Yeah, I know it's too heartfelt. Too heartfelt FUs in a super chat. You couldn't have designed a more perfect super chat. It has two ref. It has inside jokes on it. Oh, perfect then. An inside joke on it. A clever new manosphere term. It shits on somebody who deserves it. Oh, muy bueno, muy bueno, or muy bueno, bueno, bueno. Yeah, whatever. I don't speak Italian. Uh, where was I going with? It? Oh, the residual anger. And then you kind of look back. You're like, oh, that was cringe. I was such an insufferable prick, and I had no right to be. But then it settles in and you realize, OK, now I'm past the anger and that's it's no longer like, yeah, I'm dominating these bitches. Yeah, fuck these bitches. It's almost like I think Mish, we talk a lot behind the scenes. And he, he refers to it as pity and I kind of just treat it as acceptance, which it ends up being that end stage of grief acceptance. Women are going to be the way they are. They are emotional. I can't have a like your girl will never watch an ancient Roman documentary with you and you've come to terms with that. OK. You go watch Love is Blind over here, and I'm going to turn on my Roman documentary here. And then we'll get together and have a salad and do a quickie at lunch. Have a nooner. And then you realize that's just the way it is. That's the way world works. Well, why aren't women watching Roman things with you? Why aren't they doing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Why doesn't my dog speak perfect English? Why does my dog not have opposable thumbs? You can keep wishing that you had shit. Or you can just accept the things the way they are. So yeah. And that's ultimately where you want to go from this. Now most guys don't. Most guys don't. And that's fine. That's the other thing you kind of come to terms with. Is that most guys, it's not even that they can't. It's that they won't. Hold on a second here. I got to make one last note. Yeah, they don't want to. I don't want to be happy. I want to be miserable and I want to be able to blame it on the fucking Jews or the women or feminism. They always want a villain. I don't want to be better. And it's scary, dude. Some people don't like to succeed because if you su here's the thing. When you fail, you can blame it on everybody. But when you succeed, oh, it's all on you, man. You're, you have a promising career now. You're doing really well at work. The only one that could screw it up now is yourself. And that's that's where the topic came from. So, Stripper, you let me know. Did you did you figure out where I was going with this one? Being OK is a choice. I'm going to decide, pass or fail, that I am in control and I'm going to be OK with the result. Because, look, 
I don't know about you guys, and I don't know if this is a mindset shift that you can get people to. I really don't think it is. Like, you have to want it. I don't think you can get people there unless they want to be there. You know, horse drinking water, blah, blah, blah. But accepting that I am going to do everything in my power to achieve what it is that I think is important for me to achieve outside of outside influence. If I can't get there and I've done my best, I can live with whatever fail state comes out of it. Whatever happens now, whatever piece of shit thing happens because I couldn't get there. I tried to be an astronaut. Now I'm scrubbing the toilets at NASA. You know what? I did my best. And I'm happy now because I know. You know that thing? Like, what's the best you're ever going to be? Imagine knowing the answer to that. What's the best you're ever going to do? Actually knowing. It's, it's a lot of people are scared by it because, well, what if it's not the best? It won't be the best. Nobody's going to be the best. One guy gets to be the best for a brief period of time, and then he gets to have an alcohol problem. Neil Armstrong went to the fucking moon, got home. Now what do I do? He's like 30. What the fuck am I going to do with my life? How can I top faking the moon landing? <laughs> you know? So what did he do? Started an alcohol problem. Well, nowhere to go but down. Might as well go real far down. So you, nobody's going to be the best. And even if you were the best, you're probably not going to be the best for long. You're probably not going to like it anyway. But yeah, I'm going to know. And uh, here's a good example. My military career. The reason I left, it wasn't because of the charge or all that shit and the friends. It was a strictly economic decision. Uh, promotions happen on a three-year cycle. Uh, personal eval PERs, personal evaluation reviews. Every year you get one. And then there's like, I can go into the details of it. There's a performance and a potential aspect to it. It's ranked differently depending, you know, outside. And there's like uh, 20 different categories, one to five charts, whatever. The point is, uh, every year they conduct a merit board. How many people have left the trade? How many people are we expecting are going to leave the trade this year? So how many do we require to promote in each of these positions in order to keep, keep uh, our stations manned? And then they come up with a remar list. And of that remar list, they're okay, we needed three chiefs, two petty officer first class, blah, 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 blah. And then they look through all of the PERs, and it's a three-year average. So if you have 90% one year, second year, and third year, you get a 90% on your merit board. If you have like a 90% one, 30% one, 90% one, you're going to get like a 40%. And they're very inflated, and they're very competitive, especially at the higher ranks. So what I had found is, like, even though the, the, the espionage stuff for me didn't count for shit, it just amounted to the uh, SCOTUS, whatever the Supreme Court for the JAG is. I can't remember what the name is anymore. They're basically saying, what the fuck is this horse shit? Let the man live his goddamn life and stop fucking him over. And they're just basically like, shut this shit down. You guys are incompetent. They actually, uh, if I remember correctly, and this was like one of the most proud things of me, is that the military police often in whatever city the base is in have a deal going with the local police that... We can help you. Like they, they're basically deputized into the police force. And the Quebec police were like, uh, you guys are fucking fired. So they lost all investigatory powers in Quebec because of me, which is awesome. Chef's kiss. Anything you can do to fuck over, fuck over the Frenchies. Like, don't quote me on that. I probably am wrong, but I, I vaguely remember this being true. I don't know if it's still true. Don't really care. If it's wrong, sue me. Don't be like, he's a fucking liar. I don't care. Fuck him. Oh. Dark Knight Dev, $10 super chat. What's with the heartfelts, man? Fuck you. <laughs> After seeing the reaction to Toriyama's death, the Dragon Ball Z guy, men really love these stories based on a masculine arc. Do you or anybody in this space want to create fictional hero stories? I might, actually. So I, I, my goal for this year, and I don't want to, like, I hate doing the New Year's resolution thing because just by saying it, it's going to make it less likely I do it. But I want to try a fiction book out this year. I really do. So we'll see what happens. Um, Kevin Savo did his thing. I think Rolo's, I might, he might too. I don't know. I'd have to ask him. But yeah, most guys don't because that's actually work, dude. Like I'm telling you right now. Yes. The nonfiction books are work. Almost nobody does those anyway. And everybody who does do them half-assed it. Like there's very few people who actually put out a book like they give a shit, but the fiction stuff, that's a whole different beast, man. A whole different beast. And nobody is doing shit on that because it's, it's work. It's hard. You know what's easier? Yelling at fucking whammon online. Uh, residual anger. Oh, right. Residual anger. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so there, yeah. And then I realized even though that entire year, nothing came of it. There was no career implications, but I have a whole year where I wasn't able to do my job. So my evaluation popped up as a big fat fucking 10, 10 out of a hundred, which meant, and I did the math. I was in for 12 years at the time. Okay. So that means I have to do another three years to be able to go for the next promotion to P2, then another two years for P1, then another three years for chief two, then are two for chi one. And you do the math. You're like, dude, do I want to be the guy who's in for 30 years to get at that rank? And I'm like, no, this really did put like a five year delay on it. So I'm like, at this point, no, it's not really going to be worth it. And that was my decision to leave, which arguably is a red pill thing too. Like a lot of guys, when their wife cheats on them, they're like, ah, oh, fuck that bitch. And everybody's like, you leave her right now, like a knee jerk emotional reaction. But if a guy's figured it out and he's red pill, he's kind of, you know, I'm not, I'm going to leave her, but I'm doing it on my terms. I'm not making like, she's not going to make sure I have to act now because she decided to get some free dip. I'm going to be deliberate with my choices. And this is where you get guys like ultimate cat where he decided, you know what? Kids are going to be moved out of the house in five years for five years. I'm just going to go fuck some strange, stay in the house with the wife, be a good husband, be a good father because I don't trust her around my kids. Then when the kids all move out, then I'll ditch her ass for cheating on me. Not a knee jerk reaction. That's a deliberate reaction. Some guys are like, you know what? Kids are moving out next year. I'm just going to sit here and suck it up for a year. Yeah, she's a cheating whore. Yeah, she's a bitch. I can wait 12 months and then they wait. And then 12 months passes by. Then I'm like, later, bitch. Deliberate choice. I think it's great. Once you kind of take your ego out of the equation. But so many people want to be like, as soon as you find out, man, you got to kick her ass to the curb. It's like, really? Did you fail the marshmallow test in school? Relax, man. If your marshmallow cheats on you and you wait five minutes, they'll give you a second marshmallow that doesn't cheat on you. <laughs> I don't know how the marshmallow thing makes sense here, but you get what I'm saying. So, yeah. Anywho, I am going to remember. I can't remember now. Who's the teaching? Who's doing the next? Uh, I won't be able to be there, but somebody else will be. Where's the fucking rule zero? Nine rules of iron to Massey. It was, oh, there it is. Golf milkers. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a title. Paul's going to be doing this one. And it was about that chick playing golf that had her tits hanging out. So it, it'll be fun. Enjoy yourselves. We'll redirect you after there. And in the meantime, oh, you know what? I'll make a special thing on this one. Let's call, I'll call it promo in the, in the name tags. 127. Fuck it. Promo. So you may not know, I can't stand the red pill and the manosphere and just about everybody in it, with the exception of the people that you know I already like and respect, but everybody else is a piece of shit. And I say that with all due respect to the very respectful. Fuck you. <laughs> so what am I doing? I'm like, dude, I'm going back to the classics. I restarted the, the SMP for Minecraft and the minosphere is going strong. It's awesome, man. We got like a bunch of new guys in there. We're seeing we just started again. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, Tekken for pennies is out. Andrew Tate gave me a great idea a year ago when he said my wife's a three and plays Tekken for pennies. I'm like, dude, that's a really good. That's a banger title. And we're going to end this episode on the full Tekken for pennies fucking thing, because I love that goddamn thing. I love it so much. And then get on there. Technically, I'm actually pretty good at it. So if you look at the, the rank distributions right now, I am in the top two percent, two or three percent of players in North America. But of everybody in North America, top 3%. Uh, Ryujin, I think, is the rank name. With my space ninja cephalopod. And I'm like, you know what? If you're going to do something, don't do it half-assed. So on that note, we'll redirect to the next podcast for Rule Zero. You guys should check it out. We'll watch some Tekken for Pennies. Come join the Digital Ryan channel. Look, it's fun. It's creative. It's not being a bitch. And it's just sometimes I, I don't need everything to be super serious and talking about hoes and, and Bugattis all the time. Just sit back and relax. Oh, but real men don't play. Yes, real men play video games. Men have leisure time. Men get to spend it doing whatever the fuck we want. So enjoy and I'll see you there. You're sitting there going, oh, my wife's a three. I play Tekken for pennies. My name's Ryan Stone. Your life sucks. Your life sucks. Your life sucks. It's all Amen. your fault. It's all Amen. your fault. You, you can't have do anything.
It's better to do nothing than to half do something. <laughs> you just have to accept it. F it, let's go into ranked. to literally impoverish his entire bloodline. I wouldn't have done anything. So he, he's, he absolutely nailed it. Don't start something you weren't prepared to finish. If I wasn't prepared to literally impoverish his entire bloodline, his entire bloodline, entire bloodline, I wouldn't have done anything. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. Stone. I play Tekken for pennies. I almost forgot before I go. Thank you, Marty. I have a sub stack. It's where I go over a lot of the research for the books, uh, in-depth, deep dive, case studies, shit like that. Pin comment. Come sign up to it. Subscribe for free uh, and you'll get like a, synap or a synopsis of the stuff. And the paid customers, they get like the full in-depth autistic level, full detailed. Enjoy. Uh, later, boys. Seventy nine T twenty four fifty eight Learning Corp Little Red Riding Hood, take one. Uh -huh.